ATT Talks by Paulo and Ricardo ALC. Let's talk about Kizomba. So, let's go with the introduction. My name is Ricardo Souza. My name is Paula Loreiro. We are from ALC Dance Studios Dance Company and we create this podcast, KTT uh, Talks podcast, where we invite some of our beautiful friends that attended our KTT training. Oh, good. Emmanuel is here already. Yeah. Uh, our <laughs> KTT training. And we create this podcast to talk about live, talk about uh, inspirations, also about the training that we create and also about the future. And this time we have a very good friend that we, we, we love to talk with him uh, and we already know each other for a long time. Uh, I would ask everybody a big round of applause to Mr. Melo Alani. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm very good. How are you guys? Very good. Very good. Thank you. So let us know, you are, you are now in, um, in the Abu Dhabi. Yes, I'm in the middle of a tent in the desert. I have my camel. <laughs> Super nice. <laughs> Paula, I, I do, when, when you are like, um, what is the word in, in English? Um, when you don't say the truth, but you are playing with that, there is a word for that. Uh, ironic, sarcasm. Well, yes. When you are ironic, you need to explain to Paula. Otherwise, she thinks that you are <laughs> telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I refrain from doing that because I know Paula. <laughs> <laughs> and we have here also Ana Cerdeira. Ana Cerdeira, that is the Portuguese girl that sarcasm also. Sarcasm, sarcasm is good. Thank yeah. you. Mal. That she's living um, in Abu Dhabi and she's also trying to, to manage something around Kizomba yeah. there. So hope that you can get in touch. And at least you can we are in touch. You can dance. We are in touch already, yeah. Nice, nice, great. So, but you are not from um, Abu Dhabi. No, no. Although I might look like it with the beard. Uh... <laughs> Where did you born? No, no, I am. So uh, my parents are Iraqis. Uh, that's my heritage, my blood. But I've lived all my life in uh, in Sweden. Beautiful, mom. Yeah. In the city uh, of yes, I moved the uh, past four years. I've been living in Malmö, but originally from a city called Uppsala near Stockholm. It's a university city. What is the name of the city? Uppsala. Uppsala. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a hiccup. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and so you lived all your life in Sweden. You study there also. What, what, yes. Before what you study, do you remember what you wanted to be? when you would be a, a grown-up? Yes. What? I wanted to be a pilot. A uh, plane pilot? <laughs> yeah, airplane pilot. Airplane. Yeah, yeah, because you could be an a automobile pilot also. Yeah. You could be a... Yes, yes. A, no, no, you're right. Uh, <laughs> airplane pilot. <laughs> Good. But in fact, in what direction you, you went? What were your, your training, your formation, your studies? I tried to be a pilot and I studied it for two years, but then I realized that the dream is more beautiful than the reality. <laughs> Basically you're a taxi, you're a taxi driver, but on the air. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I changed, I changed in, uh, and I went in, I, I uh, studied master. Of, I have a master in applied mathematics. Okay. And I have another degree in, in economics. Okay, mathematics and economics. Oh my God, this guy is a brain. Yeah. A brain with numbers. A uh, brain that cannot get in in, um, in Instagram. It's all on the, <laughs> exactly. It's all, on the, it's all on the paper. It's all on the paper. <laughs> it's <laughs> on the paper. <laughs> she don't say to anyone. Nobody knows. <laughs> no, I will not tell nobody. And when you finished the, call, the, the university, you went directly work in that uh, kind of field? Yes. Um, well, when I was done with, with, with the math degree, I was bored with studying and I did not want to work. So I did an exchange program and I went to Bangkok for 10 months. And that's Damn. when I took the second degree and then directly to work afterwards. Yes. And you, you learn how to do massage also. Yes. With no happy <laughs> ending. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And you see, Mano, and then, then I'm the troublemaker, okay? You can see here. Uh-huh. 
Okay, okay. Well, he's, uh, he's saying he, he was laughing a lot when you said pilot. I don't know why, if there is any kind of uh, <laughs> sublimin, sub, subliminal message there. <laughs> but that's it. Okay. Um, how the, the the dance enter in your life, Milo? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm not I'm not a trained uh, dancer uh, like you guys. I did not do it when when I was younger. Uh, it came I I came across it when I was uh, my th early thirties, late twenties. Um, I was. Um, like any other guy playing football and ice hockey. For me, during that period, salsa was like Ricky Martin. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> it was nothing, it was, dancing was nothing for me. But then I went uh, for six months alone, backpacking in South America. And you know, the Latinos, they don't need a reason to dance. Yeah. And since I was alone, I got exposed to the dancing in the streets with, with friends. Uh, yeah, and that's how uh, I got in contact with it. And then when I got back home after the trip, I started to take classes. So first, your first contact was with Latin dances, salsa, merengue, bachata. Yes. And you traveled to Latin America, but to a specific country or several countries? Several, several. I was uh, in 10, 10 countries, I think. Oh, my gosh. I jumped so that, that is a good thing. When you are young, you get bored of study. So let's travel the world. Yes, that is quite normal in Sweden because I know that some countries uh, that happen very often. Yes, uh, Swedes Swedes uh, tend to travel a lot, especially in the age when they are done school before work uh, or during their before settling down period. Mm -hmm. They go traveling. Okay, and the kizomba, the kizomba dance. How and when uh, entered in your life? So it was, I think, 2012. Um, I heard the music and I really liked the music. Uh, I did not know what it was. It sounded good. Uh, it was more get to Zouk I was exposed to in the beginning. Uh, not, uh, And then I started to Google. Then I, 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 I did not like the, <laughs> the dance that much. So I focused only on the music to begin with, but then slowly some teachers started to teach end of 2012, beginning of 2013. So I enrolled in one uh, in two classes parallel. Um, Joao started to teach then, Joao Rocha mm -hmm. in, St in Stockholm, and Christoph Mensch uh, Christopher Menschak started also to teach. So I went directly and took their classes. I think Joao was on Wednesdays and Christopher was on Tuesdays. So yeah, I took How their do you classes. Say the last once name of Christopher. Sorry. How do you say the last name of Christopher? Menchak. Menchak. I, will, I always thought that was Christopher Menkak. No, no, Men <laughs> don't say cock. <laughs> Menkak. Man, Menkak. Man <laughs> Man <-cuck. laughs> <Man -cuck. laughs> would be strange if it would be woman stuff. So <laughs> yeah. Menchak. So that is a good thing that that you made that correction. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think his father is uh, from uh, Slovenia or Czech from Czechia. I think his father and his mother is Swedish. Um, he's a mix. Yeah, but your name Milo is really your name or it's a diminutive? No, it's my name Milo Alani. Milo Mehjar Alani. Okay, good, 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 and. Um, and so you were saying that you, you start enrolling directly in two different lessons with John Rocha and also with Christopher Menchak. Uh, and that was in yeah. Stockholm. Yes. <laughs> He's laughing <laughs> in Stockholm. Good. Yeah. And do you remember when you met us or when you heard about us for the first time? Yes, I remember. It's very clear to me. So um, when I was doing the, these classes, they were super slow and I wanted to learn fast. So uh, I thought, you guys, you are diluting your classes just to make money. <laughs> so, no, jokes aside. So, um, yeah, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to learn faster than the pace they were teaching. So I started to go to festivals once a month. And I think that my first festival was in April, April or May, either 2012 or 2000. 
13 in Berlin. Oh. And I saw you guys there with your colorful clothes and <laughs> your jokes, speaking <laughs> Portuguese, Spanish, English at the same at the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> what a and man. Paula, you know, you do the feet on, on, on top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, all right, uh, these guys are cool. And then we got connected. And shortly after, I think it was uh, autumn 2013, I took uh, with Christopher, I think, also the, yeah. your classes. True. It was the same group of uh, uh, Adonis and Hara, I think they were there yes. in the same yes. group. It was a nice group. Yeah. True. Yes. You made part of the second edition of the, the KTT, the Kizomba Titsu yeah. training. Uh, yeah. But you, when you before you you made that decision of attending the training, you start already teaching. You you wanted to teach, or why? No. What what were you looking for? So uh, you know, when you're learning something new, uh, you copy. Mm -hmm. uh, you copy. You copy. You copy. Uh, and I, I told you, like, I was a little bit frustrated because I wasn't learning enough with Christopher, or not, not fast enough with Christopher and, and Joao. So I started to go to, to festivals. Then my, my learning curve started to go up, and then it started to stagnate. And I felt like I was copying, copying, and I wanted to make it mine. So I was searching for these keys to make it mine, uh, to make the dance mine and not copying. So I thought, I'm going to, I need to go into a teacher's course. So I started to ask around. And all, you know, all, all uh, directions pointed to, to Porto. So I said, why not? Good. But so when you went there, any kind of expectation to teach? Nothing. You just, uh, no, I like to travel. Too. Let's go to Porto and learn some stuff with these funny, colorful, dressed people. <laughs> Something like that. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And okay. So this next question, does it make sense? How, how was the experience of level one? <laughs> It was amazing, uh, uh, and this is the beautiful thing about about uh, the dance community. You met you you get to meet people, you share experience, uh, the people from different backgrounds, different cultures, uh, all are there for the same reasons. Um, so that was a positive aspect uh, to me. <clears throat> Uh, and also, uh, you guys, you set you set the tone, you set the ambience, which was uh, to my liking, and I think everybody agrees with the with the with the way you've organized the KT, the the the, the instructor courses. Um, so it met my expectations. I got to understand, or at least I I got these keys. Mm -hmm. Then. I had to work on them to make, open the doors and make them mine, but I got the keys from you. The keys that I wanted, I got them from you. Okay. <laughs> and um, when, when, because you were not, your uh, objective was not to start teaching, or was it? No, was when never. you, when, no. Then when you decided to start teaching Kizomba, and why? <clears throat> so... Right after the first level, I, I took the second level directly after. And I think it, we were the first, and I asked if it was yes. possible. I wasn't like, yeah. So I took that, and then I took directly after the summer after, mm -hmm. I took mm -hmm. the choose classes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then I just danced, danced, and then I moved to Gothenburg in 2014. And then there, uh, I was asked to teach. Oh, sorry. Before that, before that, there was a couple of occasions when Christopher were out flying, doing his uh, festivals. I did. I I I backed him up with his classes in Stockholm. Good. So like. But like then when the I moved to Gothenburg, yeah. But when I moved to Gothenburg, 2014, it's when I was asked to teach, and I thought, okay, why not? Let's try it. Good. So so at that point, you start a, a group of students from scratch, from zero. Yes, from zero. And did you did you apply the methodology? Did you test it or you did you adapt? Did you adapt immediately? How how was the process? So the process is very much like learning dancing. You copy first, and then you mm -hmm. want to make it yours. You find the keys and by trial and error, 
uh, and with time you make it yours. It's very, it's like, or at least for me, that's my learning process. And I think that's how, how, how do you think? How do you think uh, that the kind of tools and the keys that you collect from from the teachers' training help you to to give to have this starting, or placing the question in other ways? Imagine that you didn't attend the teachers' training. You just made random lessons. You attend to a lot of festivals, and then somebody invites you to start teaching a group of students. How do you? Can you imagine that situation and compare the two the two ways? Yes. So by by doing the by doing a proper uh, teachers training, uh, you understand not only the steps. You understand the context. You understand the music. You understand a, a teaching methodology. You understand communication, what's important to focus on and when to joke and when to be serious. Uh, when you go from being a dancer directly to, to teacher, you will eventually get there. But I think the path to get there will be much longer than uh, with doing a, a teacher training. Usually, I like it has to be... Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. Because usually I like to, to look to the KTT as a lever to get there faster and in an easier way. Because yeah. we know how long it took to get uh, our, our system. Because we need to do a lot of tests, testing and trying and failing and correcting and doing a new group of students and all that process. And in the moment that it was very difficult to get access to the information, even our days, yeah. that is much easier because the internet helped a lot and now you can find good quality information. But in that time, it was quite difficult. And sometimes you, you just need to search in different places and you waste time and you get confused. So having like a step-by-step, -step, like we do it with our instructors here, with our team, uh, I like to look to this as a lever because it will be faster. Do you yeah. agree? I fully agree. I fully agree. I mean, your, your, um, uh, your, uh, teacher's course, it's structured in that way and it's very easy to understand and it's adopted, it's constructed in a way um, that is very easy to relate to, to understand and to adopt. It's like a toolkit, take it and just run with it. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you idiot, it's, sorry, sorry. What do you call it? It's like idiot proof. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you remember your the first lesson that you teach uh, Kizomba and how many students you had yes. in the, the first? So my absolute first time was covering up for Christopher in one of his classes, and I think it was maybe thirty people, thirty between thirty and forty. But talking about your your group of students, yeah, um, uh, yeah, it was it was about the same. Oh, no, first time we taught in, in, in Gothenburg? No, it was more. It was more. It was a little bit scary. Cool. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, and do you remember, I, I'm, I'm, you are the first one that I'm doing this kind of analysis uh, because we are, we are curious about all the simple details and also to be easier to communicate to future people that might have interest to enter in the KTT and they can have some kind of objections because of the investment because, in fact, I consider that it's not expensive but it's a lot of money, of course. And taking in consideration, like you, that you need to travel abroad, uh, to rent a house, to, to, to stay, to eat, all that stuff, to stop your daily job. So all these kind of things uh, makes part of the investment. Now with this um, program that is online, it's quite different because you don't need to have that um, expenses, let's say like that. Also, the experience is not the same, but you also have other kind of advantages. Because when you attend the physical training, we deliver a lot of content, like we are talking, and we give a lot of uh, um, material in order that you can have access to that uh, content. The videos, yeah. support, the PDF, all that stuff. But all the blah, blah, blah during the lessons that we deliver some pearls, they are not recorded. They are not written. You as a student, you need to listen, absorb, take, take your, your notes. notes. And in a format like an online course that have pre-recorded lessons, 
you have access to that, to the all the simple details, all the small details. So, of course, there are differences and there are advantages and disadvantages on both. Do you remember how much the students pay to do one month of, of uh, lessons with you? Do you have that idea? <clears throat> More well, or less. Our, 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 term, our term was two months. Uh, so once one hour, uh, one hour a week for two months or for eight weeks, and they pay around per student, they pay around um, 80, 90 euros. Okay, it's different, of course. Sweden yeah. have, yeah. have a different um, power. power of, 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 of uh, buying, of yeah. consumption, like in Portugal. But, of course, this money was not all for you. you. You were working with a school, you need to split, and you have your own uh, payment for your work. How long do you think it took for you to recover the investment you made to travel to KTT? So, taking in consideration that the KTT, beside all the things that it gives, in uh, in terms of uh, money, in terms oh, okay. of um, practical oh, material, knowledge. you have sixteen lessons prepared. So if you teach one hour a week, this is four months of teaching. And take in consideration the payment of the course, how long it takes for you to? Because I remember a girl that attend now the online version, a Portuguese girl that she's living in Germany. She told that in two months she was able to recover the investment, and this for us is amazing. Because we want, of course, to be uh, paid by our work, but we really want that the people can recover fast and start doing their own business. And she told that besides the money that she collects from the students to pay the, the investment that she made, she got another thing that is much more valuable because people start doing recommendation and start bringing more people. And this is the best kind of publicity that you can have when you have your yeah. students bringing more students because it's trustable uh, kind of promotion. You have an idea how long it took for you to, to recover the investment? Same, same. So in terms, of, in, terms, in terms of investment as a business case, whether you want to be a teacher or improve your dancing, it's not expensive at all. Yeah. If you want to become a good, a better dancer, as, as an expense, it's not that much because you will see your improvement very, very fast in comparison to the money that you need to pay to take private classes, to, to go to festivals or to take regular classes. So you get a, a instant feedback as, as, as your qualities as a dancer and in terms of development and what that investment mean. If you want to be a teacher and you're thinking only about money as a business case, yeah, less 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 than a half a year, you have your money back, mm. guaranteed. So, so it's not it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, a heavy heavy investment. Mm. And um, why did you decide to attend level two? Because the keys I got wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted more. Yes, I wanted more. Yeah. And, and I like you guys. I like you guys. That's why. <laughs> that was so good. The, the, answer for, uh, the answer of Christopher was when Paul asked, why did you attend the level two? And he just answered, because I like level one. And that's okay. That's <laughs> a great answer. <laughs> you know, Christopher is a, is a really nice guy, but he can have this face more, more serious guy. <laughs> He's really cool. <laughs> By the way, big hug to Christopher and those that are listening to us, don't forget to look for his books that are amazing for sure. And he's entering on this path of uh, writing books and he is sharing amazing quality information for sure. And comparing both, what did you felt different from level one and level two? Uh, the higher level of technicality and the second level, higher level of, of uh, sequences, uh, intensity, uh, so it's it's the same concept you recognize and you feel comfortable because it's based on the first level so you you are familiar with with the terminology the steps uh the the methodology you're familiar with everything but it's just a couple of steps more good but uh, the, bar, the bar is a little bit higher 
the extra the 16 lessons it's it's a very different different training no because the level one we have a long part of uh, theory you need to take a lot of coffee because lessons in the morning after a party previous you need, need to take coffee because it's like <laughs> telling stories to babies uh, i think you were in some moments also like dropping the head forward <laughs> because we speak about musicality we speak about the philosophy pedagogy yeah. things the level two we don't stop so much to talk it's not because yeah. the hours extra the training yeah. uh the, the lesson preparation it's about self-improvement as a dancer with samba yeah. the Rashina, body movement uh, a little bit of everything so for those that want more to develop develop as a dancer the level two of course brings much more keys i can imagine okay um how long you are there in abu dhabi Sorry, how long? how long? Yeah, you are there in Abu Dhabi, living. So I I moved here November last year, oh. but I traveled to Europe end of March to Sweden, and I got stuck there. Oh yeah, uh, because of the COVID situation. So I was in Sweden from March till late September, end of September. Okay. So during this year, I've been living in UAE six months, six, seven months. I've been in Europe. Okay. Do you know how are the things there, here, there in Abu Dhabi to the dance? Uh, the, 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 the presence uh, lessons are, dance lessons are allowed or not? No. In Dubai, yes. In Abu Dhabi, no. Okay. But let's go a little bit before, because we need to, to give some credit to the path that you had, because you made your investments, you, you fell in love for something that at the first sight, you didn't like it too much, <laughs> but then you took it seriously uh, as you start allow, you start helping a lot to grow community in your city and not only in your city, as you start having uh, weekly lessons, you start organizing festival, including you travel, you organize groups to travel. You went to Angola also to go more into deep the, the it was the an interesting experience, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, but looking back, looking back, how you feel, the things that you have done, because Vamulai was a great experience of event. Um, of course, business talk, this is always complicated. You start a, a partnership also with uh, Daniela. You made a beautiful project. You want to talk really like five minutes about that, uh, that things that you already done. Five minutes. All right. <clears throat> so uh, in 2015, I moved to Malmö. Daniela, she lives in, in Copenhagen. Uh, we knew each other briefly before that. Uh, so we started to talk and we decided in 2016 to like do something together and, and, and uh, to organize ourselves. She was already established for, for many, 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 many years already. Uh, she had her platform in, in Copenhagen and uh, she was the first to teach uh, with Zer Rui in, in Scandinavia and etc. So she had her platform. Uh, so we started to build a platform in Malmö. We started with regular classes. Then I had an idea of a festival that was more community focused. At, at that time also we were into the separation between, you know, the, the, the fusions and the urbans and, and, and all of the flavors, the new flavors. Uh, so I wanted to be more community oriented um, um, and I wanted it to be a nonprofit. So we created the Vamulla concept. We created a team. Big kiss to Daniela that she's here also. Beijing, Daniela. Hey, Daniela. <clears throat> so yes, uh, we created a very beautiful concept, the Vamulla concept. Um, and it went, it went, it went super good, for even financially. We made small profits, both from first edition and second edition, and both the profits, we gave it away to the child fund to help mm -hmm. uh, support African projects to children, African projects in Africa, mm -hmm. the UN child fund. All right. <clears throat> so. Uh, so yeah, it was constructed to be non-profit and we made it. It's unfortunate that this COVID is happening, not only for Vamula, for the entire dance community, but of course. Uh, 
but it's still going and it's still, still going and and, and uh, the, the the community in Malmo still exists and it's what's 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 beautiful about it it's not connected to me and Daniel only it, we have we have a team yeah. we have a team that is organizing and and delivering classes events socials so it's a very beautiful beautiful uh, atmosphere gathering of people yeah Beautiful. Congratulations for that, because yeah. we stay very, very honored to be able to be part of beautiful paths like yours, like Christopher, Adonis and Ada, uh, Selvin and Zuleika. We have, uh, um, including the, the bold guy, the, what's his name, uh, Yossi. Yeah, so yeah. we have you know, we have a lot of people that were able to, uh, not like you, because you, you keep both the sides of your life as a, a day job, let's call it like that and taking the dance as a B-side a B side of your life, but with a lot of responsibility. And we feel so proud when those that in somehow we touch were able to, to, to get some conquerings and, and to, to create standards and to um, inspire others also by consequence. And this is like what moved us. And that's why we decided also to open the door to the KTT, because at the beginning we, we had afraid at the moment that we share our gold, let's call it like that, our secrets, uh, we place ourselves in a position of comparison. And we start seeing when we were traveling for festivals and seeing people that study with us applying the same concepts, but at the same time, this it's like teasing us on our feet in order that we need to keep improving and to develop more things. And we don't regret nothing that, and we feel that these this guys like you that made the wonderful work. Congratulations, thank really. You. Thank has, you. It, no, thank you, guys, because it has to start somewhere. And and usually when you give, when you give away something, it, it's contagious. It's like the riddles on, on the water, and it just continues. There's no stop. You touch one, and the second one will touch the other one, and it will just continue. Uh, and it's it starts with, it has to start somewhere. And, and uh, you planted the seed, and now you have many trees. <laughs> so beautiful. Sorry, sorry to be in a rush, but the thing is that we teach at 8, so in 15 minutes. Um, sure. Now, as we are not on Instagram, there is no problem of being just one yeah. hour. But uh, unfortunately, this conversation is lovely. You know that we love to talk with you. We spend already hours talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, and we have a really nice relation where you come here to our... Uh, the my summer boot camp and we spent 10 days like crazy drinking and <laughs> taking sun and having fun uh, soon i hope that can happen again what is happening now in your life so you are working in abu dhabi but are you still managing the dance do you plan to do something in abu dhabi or not so um i have a rather responsible position and it's a new country for me i don't really i need time to understand the culture I need to understand the written and the unwritten rules. Um, so dance for me here is a little bit on ice, just for me to get comfortable with my new country. And whatever the future will bring, uh, I'm sure uh, dance will be in my in my mind and in my thoughts. Uh, although I'm not in Sweden, I'm still uh, I still try to be updated on what's going on with the Vamula team. Uh, but we have an idea into establishing a Vamula in UAE. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, with time uh, and with with comfort, everything is possible. Beautiful, but that, good that you talk about that because I had this in my mind. But also, I don't know your your intents because you you want to stay in Abu Dhabi for a long period, or so. Yeah, I'm here. So, yeah, so I'm here. I'm here with my work, and I have a two plus two uh, years contract. So with my with my employer, um, which is the same employer as in, in Sweden. Uh, so I will see. Um, I'm just I just moved here. So yeah, the intention is for long term. Yeah, you are you are happy with your work. Uh, I, yes. I see in your face, in your eyes when you talk about your job. I, I see that you are one of that blessed people that can say that you wake up every morning to do something that you love. I'm correct? Yes. Yes. Sometimes I sleep at work and wake up at work. No, <laughs> jokes aside, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm blessed. <laughs> there are a lot of people that even by a, a camera talk, you can see when they talk about their day job, 
the 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 color of the face change the energy change yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. people that are not happy what with what they do they are doing um, and yeah. but i also see that you want to keep doing something in dancing do you have like a big dream regarding the dance the something that you would like really to accomplish i think we've done that with vamula and what we've done uh, with the vamula team with daniela we have accomplished a lot of what, what i wanted to accomplish um, and it started with a simple thought, and then we created the name, and then pff, a couple of years later, we're sitting here talking about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, and you mentioned you mentioned the Angola trip. Yeah. The Angola trip was um, amazing, crazy, upside down, inside out. It was super fun. <laughs> Manuel was there with us. Man, it was super fun. You should have been there. I, you've been there, right? Right? You've been there yes, before. Yes. It was also quite a, an experience. Yeah. You know that Paula born there. So it was yeah. quite um, emotional yeah. because it was Paula's return to Angola after many, many years. Yeah. Uh, so it was quite emotional. And being there with Pechu, it's an experience. Yeah. We were also with Ana Maria, with his family. We went to Mushima, to the church, where I uh, asked Paula to, to get married with me. Uh, so Mushima, it's a, a very powerful place and for us have also an emotional relation. And so it was amazing. We were able to go to television like you, to go to the clubs and feeling like almost like a monkey on the circus because people <laughs> like, damn, white yeah. people like that, how, how come it's possible? And when we went, it was much before the news. So it was even more surprising for them because after it started getting more natural as more people start traveling there also, the internet also helped that. But at that moment, it was it was good, very good. So yeah. we have here something that usually we do at the end that is connected to the, the dreams and you you are able to, to have this conscience of this analogy that we do of climbing a ladder, ladder of, of success and your your dance leather is already in a high position also because you start long time ago you didn't start yesterday you have already a process and you were able to have this idea of going one step each time maybe related to your formation to in order that you don't work only with dance it's something that we are struggling and we are trying to improve the dance community the professional dance community to have um, a business and industry more understanding in order that this can pass to the next level and improve in a better way. So that's why we are also using our time to deliver free content and talk about things. And if in each talk that we do, we can inspire one professional to become better in what they're doing, to study also, not only the dance, because in order that we can share our dance, we need also to have other tools that allow us to be easier, the, the, the sharing of this information. And of course, when we have somebody like you that have university training in a lot of different things. You work in, a, in different industries. You have a vision that is completely different. You know how the things need to go. So it's good that I can see that. And here it doesn't make sense what we usually say because you have the things well organized in your, in your uh, brain. I just want to give you like a push uh, to try not to procrastinate too much in that idea of having the Vamula in, uh, in Abu Dhabi and trying to bring that good energy and good flavor um, and, and try to start in somehow creating a small community of staff to help you because as you have a day job with a lot of responsibility, you know that you cannot do it alone. Uh, and it's good that you already made that step of start a conversation with, uh, with Anna because it's somebody that is also with the, the fire of the, the starting because she's starting now and she wants to do stuff and she don't know enough people and she have all that difficulties and you have all this background associated with somebody that have the fire of the beginning, I think it will be a good combination. So I hope that one day I can see some flyers, Vamula, Abu Dhabi, Vamula as a project, not only as a festival, but something that is created there. Uh, and like crossing fingers that this will happen. Good. So I have just two things here to close because we need to teach. And um, just first, um, what would you advise to somebody that would be like undecided to invest in KTT? What would be like simple phrase, why somebody should do that? Um, if, if there is a, an honest 
uh, urge within you to know what this dance is about. KTT provides a very good foundation for you to get an understanding of what it is. And once you have that understanding, it will open your mind. But it has to be driven for reasons. And that reasons could be you want to become a better dancer or and a teacher or just understanding where this music and this dance comes from. It's also a very good uh, channel and a platform. So good. Thank you so Thank much. You. And to close, a final message for the people that are here listening. As we have here Thomas saying, everybody who was there in uh, eagerly waiting for the next Vamula is Festival. It, is <laughs> eagerly waiting for the next yeah. Vamula Festival. So, yes. Memory. So, uh, as you you want me to to conclude uh, as a message to the to the to the listeners, yeah. well, uh, uh, Vamola will happen. Uh, it will for sure happen in Malmo. Uh, we will try to make it happen here in Abu Dhabi. Um, and uh, uh, dance guys, continue dancing. Whether you dance by yourself in in the shower or with your girlfriend or wife or your husband or your boyfriend, just continue dance because after all. Life is about dancing. So, yeah. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank, Thank you for taking the time and for I your friendship. It's late already there. Um, it's already midnight, something, no? Something like that. Yes, so, it's soon midnight. Yeah, and five to Thank 12. you for your patience for changing your platforms from Instagram to, to Facebook. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I could not connect. No problem. <laughs> Thank you for those that were here listening to us. Also, it's always a pleasure to, to share. We have here Anki also say, Vamola, Vamola, Vamola. Here we go all together and keep dancing. It's a beautiful message. I hope that people can do that. Dance every single day, even if it is during the shower or while you are traveling in your house. My dear friend, muito obrigado. Be Thank kiss. you very much. Hope to see you soon. Kisses. Bye. Bye. Be safe. Say hi to everybody from me. Bye-bye. We will. For sure. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs>